Hey everybody, welcome back. We're in downtown Oklahoma City in Bricktown and we're going to take a ride on one of the water taxis here in the canal park they have set up down here. So let's go check it out. I'll just bump around a little bit. I've been here six years, guys. I've done just about 3,300 tours. I'm hearing my third 300, but we all bump through here. You cannot get this through here without bumping. So don't expect perfection. I'm just going along for the ride. Oh, there it is. Oh, look at this. I do have to duck. Normally I don't, but when I'm wearing this thing, I gotta duck there. So basically, the story of the canal, I've worked here long enough, I've whittled it down to four words, and you'll get the gist, I promise. We copied San Antonio. <laughs> you know, thank you, thank you. That's the goal for that. But we did, we did. You don't have to reinvent the wheel if, you know, if you need to bring vibrancy and life to an abandoned district of your city that people are afraid to go in 1993 and 1998, and we raised 356 million bucks. So that's how we got the canal. And yeah, these old buildings are now like 80% occupied when it's before the canal, before 1990. And we also got the $35 million baseball stadium with the money, as well as the library. The library is named after the mayor that got the sales tax passed for her that mile, less than a third of a mile behind us, uh, where we, you know, where we were attacked by a, by a horrible terrorist and 168 people lost their lives. So we were getting a lot of tourism following the bombing, which is not good because the only reason people are visiting your city is to see what happened. It's not about you, it's about what happened to you. It motivated us to make the mass projects as successful as they were. And Ron Norick, you know, we can thank, be thankful for that guy for really having the vision and carrying us through like in our darkest hour. Very Winston Churchill kind of life. I know pretty serious. I can't hear you from the sorry. One little detail about this that you kind of need to be where we are sitting for and where the balconies are, that was actually where you would drive your car or whatever. And so this thing was made in 54 weeks. But an excavation was done at that point in time. So really, like a lot of construction projects, on the side of the boat, and they got, you know, the Lone Star State there. And then also the windows are meant to be the Alamo, because this thing is called the Fiesta boat. So it's quite literally the party boat made for San Antonio, Texas. Yeah. With other people who weren't native who would hunt it just for food, or really, considered highly offensive, hunt it for sports. Well, hello there, hello there. Hello, Captain Pete. This guy, he's nice bringing the energy. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's, really but it's, it's called yeah. the Sun Killer 9000 XL, available in the booth. Right now, okay, that's only boat number four. The last boat was okay, but not great, so I need to, you know, I need to have a good. That's the home office of Sonic on the left, and it's not as easy to see on the side that I'm on right now because the canopy's blocking it. But that is the two and a half billion dollar company, the fast food chain, Sonic. And that is where most of the important decisions are made during the eight-foot section of the Bricktown Canal. Dun, dun, dun. We are now leaving the eight-foot section of the Bricktown Canal. See, that's why the timing is so important.
there are other people that are forgotten about, and those are 89ers. And just like California has the gold rush of 49 to 1849, we had this thing, the land run, sometimes called the rush, of 1889. And these guys but up here... Boomer was not a verb, it was a noun. It was describing people that were trying to live here, setting up boom towns. And generally, boom towns kind of refer to, like, oil and gas, stuff like that, especially around here. But this didn't have anything to do with that. This was just communities that were thriving, and basically, nothing was illegal. So these, these places were cool. And at one point, what is now Oklahoma City was called Hewing, after one of the people... That was a boomer. It was like, so that is a population spike. Just unfathomable. But it happened. And many similar situations on smaller scales happened anywhere in the two million acres that encompass the unassigned land. Now let's spin the boat just a bit. Mike, super much. famous guy in his time. The best comparison I would have, honestly, is kind of like a Mr. Rogers or a Bob Ross. Somebody who was just very not problematic. Everybody loved this guy and he loved everybody. It was also easier to be that way in his era in the early 20th century. But everybody loved that man. And, uh, yeah, put us on the map, kind of, back when we were Indian. This territory. one is about the 89, which was not popular among our native tribes that were here, obviously. But you know what was really unpopular? The four subsequent land runs, four assigned tribal lands, which did lead to homelessness and some bad stuff. The word land run, uh, say that to, to Native Americans, you're gonna, you know, not disrespectful, but you're gonna get some, some looks like, you're telling, you're telling my story here, so I don't, I feel uncomfortable doing that, but it's still part of my job. But the term land run, the five land runs that happened, four of them were for assigned lands, and that was quite literally the stereotype of government taking land from natives and giving it to other people. That's valid. The 89 was different. That's good. How you guys doing? Uh, you guys doing good? Pablo is pretty good. I mean, he's not, you know. Daddy. Not good. Nice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to buy it. Why buy a regular sandwich? You buy a daddy sandwich. Do what? I can do a class name and tell the office. Yeah? Yes, it is, Teddy Roosevelt. Good job, Minnesota. It's a battle between Minnesota and California up here. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt. The Teddy Bear. The Teddy Bear. The name does come from him. The guy did a lot of things in office, out of office, and when he was out of office, he ran for office again from a different party. So, just endlessly fascinating character, Teddy Roosevelt. I like that you thought about it, though, when you were like, mm, should I go for it? Should I be the first one? We are northbound narrow. Something else about Shawnee, Oklahoma, you know, the birthplace of Sonic, that you may or may not know, Brad Pitt, the Hollywood actor, turning 60 years old next year. Yeah, he was actually born there before growing up in Missouri, but he actually is, like, six months or whatever, uh, you know, child of Oklahoma. Brad Pitt, he really was. Bullet train coming out next month. <laughs> also, he wasn't just born in Shawnee, Oklahoma, he was born there as an elderly man. He's just been aging slowly to reverse ever since. So I don't know if that's funny to you, but I find it funny, so. Uh, well, how, how old are you going to be turning? What was it? 33? Oh man, I wish I was still 33. Well listen, if you want to have happy birthday, send you by a boat full of strangers, I can do it. If you don't, I have no kids, I just have bills. But if you want to, thank you. And as I promised earlier, copy that, I'm just about to be in the dump. Uh, give me 20 seconds. Anybody that wants to honk the horn can do so. Silver button, right up here. So that's the boat ride here in downtown Oklahoma City in Bricktown. Be sure and like this video, give me some comments, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, we'd love to have you, and we'll see you guys next time.